I'll tell you a secret. The only reason I accepted the invitation was so I could get some time off from the army. I didn't have big dreams. My mother, a refugee from Iraq, took care of seven of us. My father, a refugee from Morocco, worked two shifts to put food on the table. And for a girl with my background, a Sephardic, until then, the farthest she could get was third place, Miss Charm. But I didn't let this limit my expectation because once in a competition, one should win. Many of the community, the Sephardi community in Israel saw it as a miracle, a ness. But actually, the word ness comes and shares the same root as, as the verb lehitnoses, which means escape low places and rise above. And I can certainly say that becoming Miss Israel did help me to escape the life I was meant for, like my mom, and rise above and create the life I wanted for myself. And for the big question with all the beauty pageants, what is your dream, world peace, my answer was, I want to be financially independent. <laughs> yes, it was 30 years ago, and I knew that to make my own choices, I need to own my own checkbook. And so I, I realized that uh, I'm in the army, I don't have much time because of my days were uh, taken. I had to solve this problem, and the other problem was, I was called into the pageant manager, everybody was scared from, and said, you cannot model. I said, why is it a problem? And she said, we have a commitment with our sponsors, it's their problem. I said, okay, what if I ask them for a waiver? Would that be okay with you? For that, there was no answer. So I went to Gideon Oberzon, he was the leading sponsor, and uh, he understood, and he told me, okay, as long as you commit, you uh, fulfill your commitments to us, you're okay. So I started modeling. Now I had to solve my logistic problem, the army. So the, uh, the office, did, my direct officer was a woman. She refused to put me on the night shift. So I took, I exchanged all my day shifts to as many as kitchen night shifts I could get. What do I care, Miss Israel, in the kitchen, as long as I got my days to work? So this is how I end up buying my first car very soon. And continue. But the years was early 80s. I don't know whoever here is remember, but inflation was 400% in Israel. The old shekel, which some of you don't even know, does not exist anymore. And the check was in the mail 90, sometimes 120 days. With nothing to lose, I showed up to the studio with a yellow pad and hand wrote a contract stating my form of payment in US dollars instead of shekels. And while I was writing it, I also put limitation into the use of my image. That till then, you know, they book you, they tell you you are, you know, they book you for this, and then they end up doing ads from it. So I closed this hole also. And soon after, many other models just did the same. I didn't mean to make a revolution. I wasn't a feminist activist. I just wanted to get what I earned. And years later, I moved to LA. I kind of got tired of asking for work, so I decided I'm gonna create the work. I took a job as a script reader for a fraction of the pay I was getting as a model. And while I was uh, reading script, and there was, came along a script that the company decided to pass on, I thought there was a chance to make it as a movie. I asked them, do you mind if I take it? I was really like really few months in Hollywood. And they said, no, but what are you gonna do with it? So I'll do it. And I took it to a producer with, that had a film company and I told them, look, if we do some changes, we can make it a movie. I mean, not a big movie, but a movie. I said, you cannot make, ask the writer to make changes. I said, you can't, I can. And I <laughs> called the writer, made the changes, and like, within very short time. But becoming a mom uh, doesn't go very well with long hours on the set. So I took on myself the development, 
the casting, and I didn't get no credit for it. But soon I learned that credit is as important as pay. And it was my company. I mean, I was partner in it. So in our next movie, while in production, and I did the casting and I developed the picture, I handed, I handed the contract to my producer slash my husband. <laughs> and he said, what is this? I said, that's a contract for my credit. And he said, what, you don't think I'll protect you? I said, I don't want you to protect me. It's not a favor. And I don't want to put you in this position. So that was the end of it. He didn't like it, but it took me two weeks until I got him signed. <laughs> because it's about pride. Um, it's this year I was elected as Miss Israel of all times. Great honor, because it was by the women. It was an open vote. And not much changed since 1980. Women are still struggling and fighting to get their fair pay. They're still, mothers are still discriminated in the workplace. And when one doesn't work, one gets into poverty. Poverty is a prison. It's a prison of, it, either they are in prison of poverty, or prison of welfare, or prison of a partner. It doesn't matter how educated or talented we are. We are in the same position. And when I was asked recently to do a fashion campaign, I asked the fashion company to tie the campaign into uh, a social campaign to promote women empowerment. So we uh, support uh, economic empowerment for women, which is an organization that help educate, train, and support women to open a business from home, women from all sectors in Israel, Jews, Arabs, Orthodox, Christians. We all share the same problems. We are stuck in the same prison of being mothers in, in a patriarchal society. And this organization gives the tools to these women to escape poverty or an abusive partner and rise above. I really believe that Liat and Hanan, with this opportunity for us to be together, women, which Beauvoir always said, the problem with women is that they are never we. Maybe you are creating a we here of the region, and together we can create a nest and rise above. Thank you.